Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, Tom O'Brien has Tim Ord on. Tim Ord uh, has a newsletter called The Ord Oracle. It's fantastic. Go give it a check out here at ord-oracle.com. Additionally, if you go over to tfnn.com, you get down to the services tab here. And then we have two fantastic webinars from Tim Ord. This is the Secret Science of Market Tops and then the six secret ratios. Every trader should know they are fantastic. Uh, Tim, how are you doing? I'm glad to be back. Fantastic, so, uh, glad to have you here. So kind of interesting what's going on in the market, a little bit like what you were saying the last you know few times we had you on, kind of not a lot really happening in a major way, you know? I'm curious to see what yeah. you're looking at today and um, if any of your more recent analysis kind of change that outlook for the short term. Actually, a little, little bit has. Actually, this is Trump uh, was a candidate in 2016. He was also a candidate in 2020. Yep. And went back in 2016. This is chart number one. And we'll take a look at it. And actually, on my report yesterday, I says, well, the next low will be when the 10 day average uh, gets up around 1.2 or higher. And that will signal enough panic for the next low. And a lot of times uh, in election years, the low comes right around uh, the election time frame. And now, let's take a look at 2016 here. And that's that uh, pink shaded area. Uh, uh, what, what, you know, I, I shaded pink area. And the bottom window is a 10 day trend. And if you notice, uh, you know, November 5th is election day. And I have a, a red line on that November period. If you notice that the 10 day trend did not get into bullish territory. Matter of fact, it was fairly neutral, not even leaning on the bearish side. Yeah. So the 10 day trend, at least for the 2016 low, did not pick the bottom out. But what did is the SPX tilt ratios RSI, which is the top window, the RSI for that SPX ratio. Well, anyhow, the, the top window is RSI for the SPX. SPX tilt ratio, which is next window down, and window below that's the SPX, and the bottom one's the 10 day trend. So, the 10 day trend for this circumstance uh, that time around wasn't really useful. So, you know, the, again, the RSI for the SPX did, did uh, pick out that uh, November low. So, let's go look at 2020, which is, which is the next um, sure. chart. Got it up. Same. Yeah, same thing. Trump's a candidate this time around is Biden instead of Clinton, and the same thing kind of a, uh, materialized the the, the uh, ten day trend, which is the bottom window again. Didn't really see panic at that November low. Matter of fact, it was fairly neutral. And but if you look at the RSI, it did pick out that low. Now, November there's another low back in the, you know late September. That's those two red lines there. We're, we're talking about the pink shaded area again. But it did pick out that November low again. Actually, it looked like a late October low right before the election. So once the market knows who's going to be elected, it starts going up. So it probably it won't be uh, on November 5th and the market starts heading up. It will be probably, you know, several days before. I don't know how many days before, but the market will know what, what will happen. So anyhow, the uh, RSI, again, for the SPX tilt ratio did pick out that low. So let's look at the current time frame. All right. Current time frame, um, the top window is the RSI, the second window down is the SPX tilt ratio. If you notice, the RSI did get up around 70 here about a week ago, suggesting the upside was limited. And it kind of market has flipped sideways. And the sideways pattern uh, is probably going to remain consistent. If you go back to chart number two, uh, yeah, the second window up from the bottom, the market virtually kind of gone sideways since about September high in a small trading range. Really didn't decline, but really didn't advance much. It just kind of trended sideways. If you go to back to our chart number one, kind of the same similar situation. It, it, it did go down some, but not a lot. It kind of went sideways down a little bit. So let's go back to chart 13. I think in general, we're probably going to just move sideways here. Um, maybe at worst, uh, go back to the previous low, 5400 on the SPX, may not even get there. Um, I have another indicator that I showed in my report here a couple of days ago 
uh, the the NYSE summation index did hit, hit over a thousand on Monday, and normally when that happens, uh, uh, with a summation getting that high, it shows really strength in the market, and you can have small declines but not big declines, and so. At worst case, I think it's 5,400, and I don't think we'll even get there. But in general, I think this market's going to go sideways right into the election time frame. And I, I do think it's going to be a bottom. Uh, the bigger, there's a lot of strength in the market and several different indicators. And this is a consolidation uh, right before a big rally starts. And that rally is going to start around the uh, November 5th uh, election time frame, but probably several days before that. So I'm not going to be in a hurry to get a trade on because uh, we're still basically a month away for that election. Um, unless it's a really a, a strong signal, I'm going to kind of remain neutral and wait for that trade to line up. Right. So as so let's look on a chart. Uh, we're running out of time here, aren't we? Yeah, we can pull a chart for there and discuss it a little bit. And then once we hit the break, we can just continue where we left off on it. All right. Uh, anyhow, the, this chart, chart number four, is the um, uh, the bottom window is the VIX. Second window up is the SP, uh, SPY VIX ratio. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hold. So good deal. Yeah, Tim, stay right there, folks. Stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord. Oracle, uh, Tim, just do a quick recap. What we were talking about during, uh, excuse me, before the break, kind of just looking at some kind of sideways movement up until election time and then a potential uh, pretty strong rally from there. Kind of is a little bit of a warning chart. This is chart number four. And uh, anyhow, the bottom window is a VIX. Uh, second window up is the SP SPX VIX ratio. And uh, the next window up is the uh, SPX. But anyhow, there's a uh, usually the market uh, will stall when the SPX is making a higher highs and the SPX VIX ratio makes a lower high. And the pink areas across the chart show the times when that setup occurred. And the blue parts uh, or the light uh, green parts, I guess, when uh, the S&Ps was making higher highs and that ratio is making higher highs. So. When that happens, the bullish divergence, when it, when the SPX makes higher highs and the ratio makes lower highs, that's the bearish divergence. And we have a bearish divergence going on basically since July. And if you notice, market is setting at an all-time new high here, but the ratio keeps making lower highs as the SPX makes ratio uh, higher highs. So the, the upside is very limited here. The market's not going to go, uh, in my opinion, it's not going to go down much. Uh, so... Uh, you're just going to have to kind of wait it out and wait for the market decide who will who's going to be the winner, which it will before even the market uh, official announcements made. The market will know, and that'll be the time uh, to go along. So and a lot of times this indicator can give bullish signals too. So, but right now it's leaning bearish. So I'm kind of just comfortable. I'm on the sidelines right now, kind of just staying there, not seeing any. Even on a short-term basis here, not even worthwhile trades other than a core bounce up or, or now. I know, in a nutshell, I kind of recommend just staying neutral right now. Right. Wait till it gets close to election. I'll be on the, your radio show and and uh, see if we can get close to that next low. So and there may be a minor low between now and then. And if it lines up a good enough, we may, we may play it. And we may not. We'll have to wait and see. So, But the equity market... My opinion is pretty much just sideways here. Not, it's, it's just going to, markets um, don't like uncertainty. Sure. And so, and there's a lot of uncertainty right now. It's a toss up who's going to win the election. So definitely, uh, and you're seeing that reflected in the committee the way right now, either long or short. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah, and you're seeing it reflected right now with, I mean, not a whole lot has been going on in any major way. Uh, at least, at least reflecting in the market. So, um, all right, we, we actually do have uh, some some gold charts as well, which I know we're all interested in looking about. You've kind of got some, you know, we're, we're sitting at a pretty high level here in gold, uh, at least in the contract itself. Some minor movement uh, in the miners. We're looking at the weekly GDX here, if you got any good insight on it here. Yeah, um, 
actually, for some reason, there, there's no divergence on this uh, GDX chart. Uh, and, and so anyhow, the, the first chart up is chart number five here. Uh, the, the top one is GD, weekly GDX. Next one to lower is the uh, uh, cumulative up-down volume uh, percent for GDX with this Bollinger Band. And the next uh, chart lower is a cumulative GDX advanced decline percent. So in a nutshell, when this uh, when those two indicators are above mid Bollinger Band, it's in an uptrend. When it's below the Bollinger Band, it's in a downtrend. And a lot of times, this indicator also gives divergence. I have a couple of uh, uh, back in uh, late 2023. I have a red line on the uh, GDX chart, or a, uh, kind of a arrow rather, and also I have an arrow on the uh, GDX up down volume where. GDX was making higher highs, that rate of that uh, indicator was making lower highs, that was a negative divergence, market went down, and kind of the same thing happened in, in late 2023, uh, early 2024, uh, GDX was making higher highs, and that rate, uh, and that indicator made lower highs, and you had a pullback, uh, since then, we've been above, uh, moving above the mid-Bollinger Band back in March of this year, and we're pretty much just stayed there. And right now, GDX in general has made higher highs, higher lows, and both indicators in general has made higher highs, higher lows, and that's the definition of an uptrend. And so not even on a short-term basis, at least on the weekly time frame, there's a divergence here. Uh, so uh, in my opinion, GDX uh, in general is still going to move higher right into the election, if not after. Uh, so until you know, some Navy divergence show up. I, I don't see any trouble other than a minor pullback here than there. It's not giving any worthwhile signs of, of any worthwhile pullback. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go to chart number uh, six. six. Yeah. And this is another way to look at the market. The bottom window is the, I think this is a daily chart. Yeah, it's a daily GDX chart. Uh, the top window is GDX. The bottom window is the uh, daily up-down volume percent with a 50-day average. So it's a little bit type, a little bit different indicator than one before. It's a cumulative. This is just a 50-day average. And in general, when this indicator is above 50, uh, or excuse me, above zero, uh, which we're in around almost plus 12 vicinity right now, the market in general should keep moving higher. So uh, this indicator is not giving any bearish signs either. Uh, so we're up against the highs of 2022, up around that 40 range. And it uh, doesn't appear we're going to back away from it. Uh, so we're probably going to eat right through it and probably just keep on going. Uh, so that indicator is not giving any um, signs of, a, of even a, a shorter term top. And let's go to charts number seven. Sure. And this is uh, the longer term view. So these, this indicator uh, gives a signal. And once it gets a signal, uh, it's usually at least a year and a half and it can go as long as four years. And we're currently on a buy signal back. I think it flipped uh, back in March of, of uh, I'm eyeballing it here. It looks like about March of, two, of this year also. And uh, the signal is generated you know, at the bottom window is the up-down volume, is cumulative up-down volume on a monthly scale, uh, and uh, it gives a buy signal when the indicator is above the mid Bollinger Band, and the next higher window is advanced decline cumulative on a monthly time frame. And same thing, buy signal when you're above the mid Bollinger Band, and both indicators are above the mid Bollinger Band they have been since early this year, and. Uh, the monthly charts are not showing any divergence whatsoever either, so it's trends up. Uh, I don't see a pull. I don't even see sideways. I think it's just going to keep moving higher. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to seeing you Tuesday. All right. Thanks a lot. Folks, uh, stay right there. We'll be right back.